Three survivalists were working their way through a jungle when they came across a river. They had to cross this river and it was filled with crocodiles and alligators and snakes. So the first guy said, you know, I'm just going to dive in there, swim as hard as I can between them. It looks like there's an opening over there and get over to the other side. So he dove in that river and he swam as hard as he could and a couple of crocodiles got him, but he ran against a couple of rocks, but he got over to the other side with only missing one toe and a lot of scratches. So the next guy said, you know, I think I'll take the rocks and save my toes. So he took a running leap and he got on the first rock and the second, the third, boom, in the water he goes. A couple of crocodiles, a couple of alligators, a bunch of scratches climbing up on the rocks, gets over to the other side, no toes missing. So the third survivalist was a woman. She went in her backpack, got out her map, read the directions, walked up the river and crossed over on the bridge. Why is it we find it so difficult to follow directions? Following directions always makes the job easier, although many of us prefer to try it again and again on our own until we finally realize we cannot do it and we get out those directions. We're forced to do it. That is, of course, if we have an accurate and complete set of directions to follow. I believe that this is what is at the heart of the house cleaning training challenge for most companies today. It was for me. I simply never took the thousands of hours it takes to document all of the many moving parts there are in cleaning a home. You need a complete and accurate set of directions on how to clean a home for every cleaner who works for you. Leaving anything out really renders them useless because you're simply going to have to go back out to the field and train them that in the field. Well, you're not really training. What you really are doing is showing them something that you simply haven't taken the time to document. Like pictures of your products and your tools. If you put these pictures in a manual, in a document that they can read and look at and familiarize themselves with it before they even get into a home, Chances are they'll know those products by the time they get to the home if they see them enough in a manual. Some companies do take the time to show the products to the employees before they get in the field, a new trainee. They get out the supplies cart and they say this is the product we use to clean the sink and the counter and the shower walls and the floors. Sometimes, unless they're really dirty, then we use this product. We use these towels for the bathroom, these towels for the kitchen, these towels for the dusting. And this employee isn't even going to clean anything but bathrooms that day. And then they go, come on, let's go, we're in a hurry, and out the door they go. Then they're very disappointed when they get to the first home and that employee doesn't remember what product, tool, or towel to use in that home. They can't remember it. I cannot believe that we think that they could remember it that fast. I couldn't remember that, and I have 34 years in the business. So pretty soon they stop teaching that in the home as well because it's nothing more than a waste of time. And you know what? It really is. But using a picture of the product again and again in your manual will not require you showing every employee the same thing over and over again because the repetition in the manual made it habit before they ever picked up that product. Now office training is no longer a waste of time and you are no longer wasting your trainer's time saying the same thing over and over and over again. It will also help with trainer frustration because they don't like wasting time either. I'm not sure why, because they get paid for it, but when that person that they put their heart and soul into the first day saying the same thing over and over again, perhaps for the 50th time if they've been with you for a long time, when that new employee doesn't show up for the second day of work, they are very frustrated. Again, it didn't cost them any money, it cost you money. So you're frustrated too. But you continue in this cycle. You could take away 75% of that trainer's time and 75% of their frustration by allowing that trainee to learn all this before they even ever get to the trainer. And then oftentimes that trainer's frustration runs rampant through your company as they're talking about how frustrated they are, and pretty soon nobody in your company wants to be a trainer. And now you've got another big issue on your hands. 
but this is a rabbit trail. Let me pull it back in. So back to our training program. What is the most important thing regarding that training program? What must it do? It must work, like any set of directions. And like any set of directions, or order for them to work, they need to be complete, accurate, and in the right order. Think of making a cake. You don't just walk in the kitchen, put some flour, water, and whatever else you might think goes in a cake in a pan and mix it up, throw it in the oven, and expect to eat it. You look for a recipe for the kind of cake you want to make that looks really good. One that has ingredients and one has a set of directions on how to put that cake together. Then you follow that recipe exactly and you expect everything you need to make for that cake to turn out excellent to outstanding to be in that recipe and the directions to tell you exactly how to put it together for it to come out exactly like it looks in that picture. You don't put the ingredients in, in the order you come to them in the pantry. You put them together in the order that the directions tell you to put them together. Perhaps creaming the sugar with the butter not the flour first, just because it's in your cabinet first. Or what happens when you attempt to put a simple set of shelves together that come in that little box in China that looks like there's no way that box can turn into the shelves you ordered? Most of us have attempted to put those shelves together for a couple of hours, for something that should have taken 20 minutes, until we finally break down and read the directions. And many times because the directions are even bigger than the shelves themselves. I mean, come on, how hard can this really be? Now you just hope that the directions are in what? Your native tongue, English, Spanish, whatever it might be, and that everything you need is actually in that itty bitty box. Teaching someone how to clean a home is no different. You need a how-to guide, a set of directions that is complete accurate and tells you the order in which to do it. So back to the most necessary and important feature of your house cleaning instructions and that is again what? That it works. When this cleaner gets done watching and reading your videos and manuals to learn how to clean a home, your how-to guide, will they be able to go out and clean a home perfectly without anybody telling them what to do? Have you provided them with everything they need to be able to accomplish that just like you expect to make a beautiful cake when you, and a tasty cake when you use a recipe? Although most of you are aware of this, your training package should have both videos and manuals. Your trainees will learn and retain more when reading the manuals, but the videos are a picture for them, especially if they've never cleaned before, and I don't know how to teach process without videos. But reading is more engaging. Videos are passive. Actually, students prefer to read their materials to watching videos because they are, of course, quite concerned with the outcome of their scores at the end, and they score higher when they're reading. So this brings me to a very interesting fact to consider. Your, most of your training is done in the home with your trainee watching the trainer. That's a video. So of course it will take much longer to train your trainee in the field than if they can read data first and then be reinforced in the home. When you think about it, the reason you have to train in the field is you don't have a recipe. When you want to bake that perfect cake, there's no chef standing behind you saying, oh, wait a second, I forgot to tell you the cream there. No, you expect a complete and accurate recipe and you can stand on your own and make a perfect cake. Same, give the same advantage, the same opportunity to your cleaners, your new cleaners. Give them a recipe complete and accurate, that will work. Let them go out in the field and wow your trainer. The only thing your trainer should say is, what did you miss? And wait until they miss it. Of course, one of the most important ingredients in your recipe will be time. It takes a very, very, very long time to document an accurate cleaning manual 
and put this all together. I have probably 4,000 hours into this. And some companies will have to actually create their policies and their process and their procedures before they're even able to document it. I had a cleaning service for 20 years. My heart and soul with my cleaning service, as many of you know, was always the operations side. After that, I, I've had 14 years of working with in 52, off, well, 56 offices across the country and Mexico and Canada. So the majority of my years have been spent looking at training. So that 4,000 hours, 2,000 was this last year during COVID, I needed something to do. But before that, it was just working on it to improve it. The reason I always put so much emphasis on, my, on the cleaning part of my business was because I didn't have any, hardly any internet exposure. My business started in 88 and I left it in 2008. So back there, there weren't Google ratings. Our Google ratings were word of mouth. And word of mouth made a lot of sales for me. I had 754 repeat clients and I cleaned 95 homes a day. We did not have Google ratings back then, but we had word of mouth. And word of mouth could sell or destroy faster than Google ratings ever could. If you were cleaning a member, an influential member of a soccer team, and they loved your cleanings, you could end up with the whole soccer team. But unlike respect, if you do a bad job on any given day, they will bring that word of mouth to that soccer field, and it will spread faster than any Google review could ever be seen. And I couldn't call my friends and say, hey, will you go to my site and give me a good rating? I need to bury this unfair rating I got. Fair or unfair, it was what it was. And normally, I do feel that ratings are fair. We needed to make sure that every time we cleaned somebody's house, it was a five-star rating. If you have a process and procedure in place, there's really no reason why it shouldn't be. I'm going to take another little rabbit trail here. Please forgive me. But those 95 homes a day, or almost 500 a week, were all repeat clients. I want to tell you that there's nothing better than running a business with almost every single home being a repeat client that your cleaners clean. It's so much easier to manage. Your cash flow is so much more dependable. And more than anything, and this is why I'm taking the rabbit trail, it helps immensely with your attrition and with your attendance of your cleaners. When they wake up in a bad mood one morning, but they know the five clients they're going to clean that day, and they know they all tip, and they know the team has been with them for five, ten years because they, nobody really quits a job with that kind of repeat clients, that they can sit in the backseat of the car and go, hey, I'm really in a lousy mood, and nobody's, nobody's going to care. They'll get over it. They've been together for too long, and they make a great team. So I don't want to stay on this rabbit trail for too long, but I do want to say really work on retaining your repeat clients. I know some companies that sold 200 last year and they still have 50 of them. That's not five-star cleaning. So, sorry about the rabbit trail. I could go on and on, on and on about the value of, about, of a repeat client base, but that's another video. But again, keeping a big repeat client base all starts with complete and accurate directions, how to guide. I'm going to cover only the basic training of house cleaning in this session. This gets the trainee out within two to three hours cleaning either a bathroom, a kitchen, or dusting on their first day. With no training time in the field, just again, asking the cleaner what to do miss, but please don't tell them. Let them try and remember it on their own because you want to know as well, does your set of cleaning directions, your how-to guide work? If your trainee can go out with that person and rarely say what did you miss and never has to tell them what to do, your set of directions work. If they don't, figure it out. Because again, when you bake that cake, the chef is not standing behind you telling you what to do. You can follow the directions. I sometimes think cleaning a, baking a cake is harder than cleaning a house. And again, don't take away that delight when you walk into that party with that beautiful cake and everybody goes, wow.
don't take that delight away from new, your new trainee. When they read and truly study your set of directions the night before on their cell phone, and they clean that first bathroom perfectly, and you go, wow, I bet they'll be back the next day. My training program has five segments per course. Each course has a fluffy charm school welcome video that is professionally done, so it adds a bit of a nice background to the video. My training program has five segments per course. Each course has a fluffy little charm school welcome video that is professionally done, so it adds a nice touch for a new employee. I do not show it to employees I am retraining, and I do not show it more than once. So even though it's on all three courses, I only show it once. Uh, what it covers is things like looking professional, being on time, not eating clients' food, not even one caramel out of a bowl, not taking their items, don't take anything out of the wastebasket. So just in case you're in a bind, and we've all been there, and you hired somebody at 5 and they're going to start at 8 the next morning, you will have absolutely no time to orientate them at all and tell them these little things that could indeed get you in trouble with the client. You could have them watch a video. You can shoot yourself or use mine. Something that just goes over the basics that they might not think is important. What it covers is things that will affect the outcome of the client's perception of how you clean their home. The other things you can cover when you get back to the office, but things that will have an impact on the perception of the quality of the cleaning has to be covered before they enter that home. Like for crying out loud, don't let the dog out. The next video I use in the house cleaners kit is a video of a professional cleaner cleaning a kitchen, a bath, or dusting. I feel this video is necessary for the person who has never used a process or used an apron. If your company has process and has uses aprons, you could probably skip this video. It might even confuse them and go right to the process video if you're wanting to simply change your process or tweak it a bit. What it gives to a new person who's never cleaned a home before is a perception of what it's like to clean a home. Like, how do you use the apron and how do you flow and the concept of your dusting going around the room twice or if you're doing bathrooms in numerous steps, not just doing everything all at once. It's efficiency and that gives them a visual of it. I will tell you that when I just got done training in La Paz, when the people wanted to watch something again because they felt they didn't quite grasp it the first time, they asked to watch both the professional cleaner and the process video. You can find one on Google. Anything will work as long as it's a professional cleaning that follows a process and has decent tools and products in it. The remainder of my cleaning kit is the heart and soul, the nitty gritty of consistently delivering five star cleanings from the first home until the last home a cleaner cleans for your company. The next video, lesson two, is all about process. When you are writing your set of instructions for your training program, you need to cover two parts. The first part is process and the second is procedure. Process is the order in which you clean a room. What comes first, second, third, etc. Procedure is what products, tools, and actions you use to clean everything in that room once you find it to clean. I use a video to teach process and I use a manual to teach procedure. I will first cover process. I believe it is easier for a cleaner to first learn what to clean when and then learn how to clean it. I also feel that it is very difficult to teach process in the home, ironically. There are so many distractions like the client who loves to participate and watch in any training, the kids, the dog, the cat. I think you get my point and you've been there and done that. And then there is the actual teaching of the procedures, the products, tools, and actions to use if you have not taught that in the, home, in the office already. Always, and these are very important, and they always, always overpower the teaching of a process. It needs to be taught before they get to the home.
I will also submit to you that it's impossible to teach process in a deep clean. Process just gets lost once again if you're in the inside of the bathtub forever. And in some make readies, you can be. Uh, or the same thing as a move in, move out. This process saves the average cleaner about 15% of their time, and I have yet to this point not run into an experienced, excellent cleaner and not found something we needed to fix that they missed because we were following a process. And they had been missing this for all those years. So it was quite overwhelming to them. It definitely humbled them, so I highly recommend that you always teach process in a repeat home of a cleaner where they have been cleaning for years and years, and they can't say, well, I didn't clean this house last time. Even if they think they're the best ever, once they see their own dirt that they miss, because our cleaners really care, again, does make them think, huh, maybe there is a better way to clean a home. Then turn them loose the next day to practice your process, and they come in at the end of the day and go, oh my gosh, I saved 15 minutes off of this, and I know the quality is perfect, and they are sold on your process, and so will you be. So let's look at process. I use a video to teach process. There are nine steps to the cleaning process for a bathroom. I use a video with sketches to simulate the cleaner's process for cleaning a bathroom, which will turn this process into a habit before your cleaners ever walk into an actual home. And it will become the core of your bathroom cleaning. There are nine steps to cleaning a bathroom. Colored circles will designate what is done in each step. The first thing you do in step one is place your supplies caddy with your apron in it if it is not on, your lawn duster, and your vacuum just outside the bath door. Second and third, you gather the trash and all the rugs and place them outside the door and out of your way. Step two is lawn dusting. We begin by standing in the first corner, star A, and following the colored circles. We have added colored lines and arrows to show you in what direction to move your long duster. The bright pink round circle to the right of the door is exactly where you want to put your duster head, where the wall meets the ceiling to the right of the door. You will dust everything on the top, following the arrows into the corner and continuing as you can, far as you can reach to the left. Many owners and cleaners make the mistake of starting directly in the corner and going in one direction. If you do that, you have to backtrack in one direction or the other. And this is a repeat home. It only needs one swipe. We're just trying to get that little bug out of there, that spider out of there that's going to start making its web. But we certainly don't need to go back and forth. If you do that in every single corner, it adds up at the end of the day with all the rooms that you lawn dust. And pretty soon you think it takes too long and you don't lawn dust. And then cobwebs build up. And this vicious circle starts of the repeat clients canceling at about six months. I believe teaching process will get this done in a minute to a minute and a half in the bathroom and keep a client for years. Step three can only be performed in a dry bathroom, which is why we do it before using any liquid cleaners or water because step three is vacuuming any hair out of the sinks, tubs, showers that are dry, and finally the floor. It is so much faster to clean if you're not dealing with hair stuck in your towels. Step four is pre-treating mildew and or soap scum areas. You have picked up your caddy when you dropped off your vacuum cleaner so everything that you need to pre-treat is in your caddy that you're going to put by the toilet. You will take only the items you need to pre-treat and pre-treat your sink, your tub, and your shower and go back to the toilet where you, you will use different products to pre-treat the toilet. You take your caddy with you to perform step five, which is scrubbing the inside of the sinks, their faucets, and the inside of the tub and shower and their faucets. Be sure to do this all in one circle, and when you are done, you, will, you want to rinse, but not dry. And then you will end up back at your toilet, where you can prepare your apron for step six. 
Step six is wiping and shining the trip. You will want to put the appropriate towels and other products in your apron that you will learn in your next lesson, Procedures in the Manual. You will start at the door and you will clean everything you come to as you go around the room. The door facing any spots, the door handle and around the door handle, the light fixture which is usually missed, the light, the mirror, the sink, any spots in the cabinet, the towel holder and work your way around the bathroom until you get back to the door. Step seven, go to your toilet, clean that. Step eight, clean the floors on your hands and knees or with a mop. And step nine is replacing the trash can and the rugs and looking at everything in the room to make sure that no products have been left behind and that everything is straightened. Then we go back through and review it one more time with the training until they know it by heart and when they get out there they know exactly what to do. Once your trainee knows what to clean, they need to know how to clean it and that's when your manual comes in. These are the products, tools, and actions that your company uses to clean an area or an item. Your manual should be presented in process order in the exact same order that they just learned to clean a home, so that once again reinforces that order, and it's also very easy for them to understand. You'll want to show, as I said in the beginning, lots of pictures of your cleaning products and the tools. Keeping in line with our theme, this is my bathroom manual course. It starts with the products, which should have a picture of the Tilex next to a Tilex, and all of the products here. I do not have that in here. This was a discovery I made in La Paz, but it is possible in my manual to add pictures, which I will do as soon as I can find the time to do it. The cleaning tools also should be pictured in here so they know exactly what they look like and all be listed. These are tools and products that are used only in the bathroom. Do not list all of the cleaning products in your company, only those used in that room. I show a carrying caddy and I make sure that I tell them to keep all the bottles pointed to the inside. If you notice, the arrows are inside the picture so that you can read this manual on a cell phone, which I believe is extremely important in today's world. Um, we tell them what to do with the, trash can with the trash. It isn't just as simple as taking the trash out. Does your company line the trash cans with liners? Do the customers leave the liners? Do they wash the inside of it out? These are all things that things that should be told to them about your company because every company operates differently. Just because they work for another cleaning service and they now come to you doesn't mean that they know how to clean out the trash can. Maybe your concept of a clean trash can is wiping out the inside every single time, putting it in a new liner, and away you go. Maybe their concept was take out the trash to the trash can and the client comes home and puts the trash liner in and they never wash it out. You've got to tell even experienced people what, you, what your concept is of clean. Lawn dusting, I have included some examples of very intricate lawn dusting where there's lots of um, recessed lights and mirrors and corners so that they can see that there's a process they can follow. Tell them to be sure to go underneath the lips of the countertop, counters. Um, and then we cover the vacuuming we go into the pre-treating, we cover the scrubbing, we cover every single step and every single thing in that step. So when they are scrubbing, you should have a picture of what they scrub with there. And then we conclude with a quiz. So to wrap up, what you are doing is not training. When you bring on a new employee and you are showing them how to clean a house, you need a how to clean a house guide. It has to work. When they get done reading your guide, there is no reason why they shouldn't be able to go to that home and clean without somebody standing behind and telling them every single solitary thing to do. You have to have a process and you have to cover procedures. 
your products, tools, and actions. You should have both a video and reading documents, and you should have a quiz. Preferably, this will be online and cell phone compatible. But again, it has to work. Does your trainer have to stand behind them? Do they have to be a chef? If they do, why? What's wrong? And whatever is wrong, fix it. It's a lot of work. But I really am trying to create here a mindset that goes with today's new generation. They do not want to be told what to do. They want to be... So many of them have asked me, don't you have something I can read? Give them something to read, a video to watch, and then watch them, and give them the opportunity to wow you. But in order to do that, you have to be documented. Where do you start? If you have nothing, I guess, in the field, watching your people do what they're doing now and documenting their every single move, putting your products together, your tools together. It's going to take time, 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 time. But it is so worth it. But I will say, you do not need to do everything yourself. You can go to my housecleanerstraining.com site and you can purchase it. All done, and all you have to do is go in and edit it. I have the process, I have every manual, and the manuals are editable. You can take my Tylex out and put your hydrogen peroxide in. You can take my pictures out and put yours in, although that would be a lot of work. In the beginning, you just want to get it out there, and it's baby steps. You can keep working on it as you go. So I hope to hear from you sometime. I hope you visit housecleanerstraining.com. There is a five-day free trial available, so you can see exactly what is covered. And most of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you got all the way to this, you are a patient person, and I congratulate you. But I also hope you learned something. And I hope that you can work on the mindset of training no longer needs to be done in the field. The place to do house cleaning training is in the office or in the home on their cell phones. Give them a how-to guide and see what happens to your life. See what happens to your company. I think it will be transformed.